What's going on, y'all? It's your boy, Alex. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, and we about to get straight into this because I am about to cook. This is going to be a good one. This is going to be a classic. I can feel it already. Y'all see this dude in the store who was just crying? Please don't call the cops. I just got out. Please don't call the cops. That's your average hood dude. That's your average bad boy, regardless the race. Okay, regardless the race, mafia, Latin king, triad, it doesn't matter. That's the average one. A scared little boy. As soon as you take his gun away, as soon as you take his leverage away, he breaks down. He starts singing like a canary. He said, I just got out of jail. I can almost guarantee you that's for snitching. Because as soon as this dude said he wanted to call the cops, he broke down. He broke all the way down. He started twerking. He started doing the Tootsie Roll. That's your average hood dude. You guys have to understand that. That's the average one. Most hood dudes, okay, most bad boys, most street guys of any race, like I said, come from broken homes or orphanages. Okay, they had to do that to survive. Or they had to do that to help their mother pay the light bill. Or they had to do that to feed their siblings. They're not really about that life. They're not really tough. They're not really stone cold killers. He could have shot that guy at multiple different times. How do you let someone wrestle a gun away from you when you were six feet away from him? As soon as he got that close, you should have shot him. But he was never going to shoot him because he was never really about that life. He just thought the dude was going to break down, which by all means, he should have broke down. I understand why he didn't. Those of y'all who know, I grew up in upstate New York, but I went to college in Baltimore, Maryland. I spent a decade of my life in Baltimore, Maryland, all the way up until about 28, 29-ish. There was a time I got robbed, but the dudes had knives. They didn't have a gun. Well, one of the dudes had a gun. I'm sorry. The other dude had a knife. I tried to fight him, but that was pure generally. That was stupid. I wouldn't do it again today, but I made it out alive. I didn't get shot or stabbed. I threw my phone down. They tried to take the phone, and I was able to get away, but I was swinging. I tried to fight at first. <laughs> like, so it's a reflex. I get why dude do it, did it, but he shouldn't have did it, and the dude didn't expect him to do that. But yeah, you got to understand, most of these guys are just scared little boys. And even deeper than most of these guys being scared little boys, you guys also have to understand this. A lot of these dudes go into street life just to get women. Because you're going to unlock certain amounts of women just by going into street life. There's some women who only want to deal with street dudes. This is reality. Some women are just like that. They grew up in that environment. That's what they like. Of any race, some women just want mafia boys. Some women just want Latin kings. Some women just want triads. That's just how they built. That's what they want. So these dudes join for that. They're not really joining to make no money. They're not really hustling on that block. They're not really about that life. They just want the girls. They just want some V-Box. They want some hood V-Box. They want some mafia V-Box. They want some triad V-Box. They want some Latin queen V-Box. That's what they want. That's why they did it. Then you also got to understand a lot of people who get involved in criminal activities like this, their legacy, their brother was in the gang. Their uncle was in the gang. Their cousin was on the block. So they got in by default. They didn't even have to go through anything to get in. They just got in by the fault. They're like, yo, this little CC's brother. So everybody just respect him on the block, but he's not really doing anything. You guys got to understand, when you really know how the dynamics of this thing works, okay, a lot of these guys are punks. A lot of these guys are chumps. A lot of these guys are only tough to women. And the reason the women think they're tough is because the bad boys, they beat the hell out of women. They'll stomp them out. They'll cuss them out. They'll treat them like crap. And these girls be scared. They'll put the gun to, they'll put the blicky to their forehead, put the blicky by their V-box. And like I said, some girls get turned on, some girls get scared of this. I know a lot of you dudes probably had a girl say, oh, you know, you can't mess with him. He's crazy. He's crazy. And if you grew up in the hood or you, you know, grew up around the mob type dudes or you grew up around Latin kings and mafia type dudes, you realize really quick, girls don't even date the dangerous ones. The guys who really be moving weight, the guys who really be putting in that work, the guys who really catch bodies, women don't talk to them. First of all, they move like bosses, so you rarely even see them. And when you do see them, they with the baddest girls. They with the IG miles. They with the escorts. They're not with no foot-level, low-level hood rats or no foot-level, low-level trailer park traces or any of that. But you realize most girls, they dealing with the foot soldiers, the dudes who be on the block all day running across the street trying to talk to them. They're not dealing with no Frank Lucas type dudes. They're not dealing with the dudes who really move weight. So a lot of these dudes, you know, you see her baby dad or you already know her baby dad and you know that he's a bitch. She just doesn't know he's a bitch because he'll whip her ass. But when he see you, he don't talk to you the same way. Why? Because you're a grown man. So he's going to talk to you with respect. So she doesn't realize only she's afraid of him. <laughs> and then, uh, You guys don't realize a lot of them are beta males. 
I repeat, a lot of hood dudes, they're just beta males. They're under their beta males with guns, which is dangerous. Because a beta male with a gun is capable of shooting anybody. I repeat, a beta male with a gun is capable of shooting anybody. So he's the most dangerous. But a lot of these dudes are beta males. And y'all think that the bad boys be having all the baby moms because they be getting all the chicks. But listen to me, listen to me good when what I'm about to say. The beta males have a bunch of baby moms, not because they're getting all the chicks, but because they have a scarcity mindset. See, the real dudes, let me tell you something. Let me break down my family, okay? There's a lot of gang members in my family, all right? Obviously, I'm not going to use anybody's real name, all right? But one of my cousins, okay, the one who's really on his Frank Google statics, the one who really always got like four Gs in his pocket, the one who has his own car, obviously, he can't put a place in his name or a car in his name, but he slides the girl the money, the one who's really born like that, he doesn't have any baby mamas, okay? My second cousin, who's really born like that, he doesn't have any baby mamas. There's a third one who's balling like that. He has one baby mama. But the broke one, the broke one has three baby mamas. And he's the one who's only in because my other cousins are in. <laughs> Obviously, I'm like, I'm not going that route. But he's only there because of that. He's the one with three baby mamas. Why? Because he has the scarcity mindset. <laughs> he's not really getting to the bag. You guys got to realize, again, most of the bad boys that girls deal with are the low-level foot shoulders. They selling weed at 30. They selling weed at 40. You're supposed to have moved on to heroin. You're supposed to have moved on to crack. You're supposed to have moved on to cocaine, meth, perk, something. But they're still selling weed. They're foot shoulders. They're foot shoulders. (laughs) And they're doing that because they can't even do that right. They're doing that because they never took the business serious. They don't make any money. They can't be trusted with heavier product because then if they mess that up, you got to kill them. See, if a dude let a girl smoke some of his weed up, you don't have to kill him. You could just beat him up. You could just threaten him or you could just watch him make the deals. But see, you give a dude some real work. You give him some cocaine and he letting the girl snort the cocaine up. Now you got to blow his head off. Now that's dangerous for him and you because now you got to worry about getting caught. So you just don't let him move up. That's what a lot of you guys don't understand. Girls are scared of the real bad boys. And the real bad boys, they're dealing with high-level women. Even in Baltimore, I knew this one dude, okay? I'm just going to call him Ted. But I knew this one dude, and this dude, when I tell you his wife was bad, his wife was bad. He brought her ass, he brought her titties, and she was already pretty. They live in a big-ass mansion. He doesn't hit the block. He puts the work to the block. He distributes the work in the block. One time, he was telling me, like, yo, I told this girl, yo, just pay the cop off and stay out of trouble. The cop don't want you on that block. Get off that block, stay out of trouble. She didn't want to get off the block. She wanted to challenge the cop. So naturally, the cop arrests her because she's challenging the cop. She's like, I'm not going no goddamn where. This is my block. Cop arrests her. He has to come down there. Now he has to pay twice the amount because she didn't want to play by the rules and just pay the cop and stay off the block. And he was pissed. He's like, yo, you do that shit again, I'm going to blow your fucking head off. Uh, the IG models you see, the escorts you see, the tens you see, they're the ones who are dealing with the Frank Lucas types. They're the ones who are dealing with, they are the ones who are dealing with the Pablo Escobar types. They are the ones who are dealing with the Godfather types. <laughs> okay? Not the low-level women that you see. Not the women who are curving you. They're not dealing with no high-level nothing. They're just dealing with some dude who's broke as hell and got mama and daddy issues and he beats the hell out of them as a result. That's what they're dealing with. So you guys got to understand that just because somebody's hood by no means makes them alpha. Just because somebody is from the streets or game banging by no reason makes them tough. You guys gotta understand this stuff. So this whole Pookie Ray Ray nonsense that people talk all the time. If you really deal with people like that, you know a lot of that's cat. It, like I said, it doesn't matter the race. I knew this white boy. This white boy used to move meth. They used to move meth and coke out of a pizza shop. This is still in Baltimore. They used to move meth and coke out of a pizza shop. You can't make this up. I'm dead ass. If I'm lying, I'm fine. So. He used to get put on, but then he gets got put off. He tried to get put back on later, but they put him off because he started using the product. Now, he never became full meth head, coke head, but he was using the product. And he would have little spurts where he was addicted and then little spurts when he was off. So he couldn't be trusted. So they kicked him off of the project. But there was nothing tough about this dude. Not at all. This dude never killed nobody. He never shot nobody. He never would. He would go down. If you're from the um, Baltimore area, you'll know what I'm talking about. He would go down on West North Ave, okay, off of Greenmount. He would do his work, and he would go back to the suburbs. But he got too dirty, and they're like, yo, we can't trust you like that. So they took the work from him. But this was not a tough guy. This was a guy who was legacy. This was a guy who got in because his brother was in. 
And his brother moved major work. You guys got to understand the politics that go into this. You can really tell a lot of times. You want to know how you can tell somebody's tough or not. Now, again, don't test this method. It's not worth your life. But if you really want to know if somebody's tough or not, you look them in their eyes. If their eyes have a soul in it, if their eyes have water in it. I'm not even talking about crying. I'm just a soul, water, emotion. This guy's not a tough guy. This guy's a guy stuck in a situation. Or this guy's a lazy dude who doesn't want to work. But if you look in those eyes and they have no soul in it, don't mess with that guy. That guy's serious. That guy's not to be fucked with. See, three of my cousins, yo, there's no soul in their eyes. <laughs> like, we fam, so I'm good. But there's no soul in their eyes. One of my cousins, it's so all up in his eyes. He has no business on the block. He's always in and out of jail because he can't do stuff right. So you guys got to understand, <laughs> nothing about just being street or being a quote-unquote bad boy makes you alpha. Nothing about it. It doesn't mean you're tough. You can still be honey bun sweet. As a matter of fact, a lot of them are honey bun sweet. I just need you guys to know that. I need you guys to understand that. Because, like I said, the narrative that they give you online is like, yo, all these dudes, you know, they out here, they super tough, they bang, 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 gang, gang. You're not even tough. You're not even masculine. You're not even alpha if you're not a street dude. A lot of street dudes are not masculine. They're girls with guns. Anybody who would shoot you for stepping on AJs, I don't want to hear about masculine talk. Anybody who would shoot you for sleeping with a thought, most hood dudes, girls are thoughts. Most hood rats are thoughts. If you'll shoot somebody over a thought, if you'll shoot somebody over your baby mama who you're not with, that's not masculine. That's a scarcity mindset. That's feminine. That's emotional. That's feeling like you have ownership. I just need you guys to understand that. All right? Now, like I said earlier, if you work at a Metro PCS, Metro PCS is always in the hood. If you work at a Rainbow, Rainbows are always in the hood. If you work at a Shoppers, Shoppers are always in the hood. You catch my drift. If you're working at any of these places, you need to transfer to something else. Quit your job. Find another job first, but quit your job ASAP. Start applying for other jobs ASAP. These places always get lobbed. They always will get robbed because they're in the middle of war zones. And you don't want to work in the war zone. I'm Alex and I'm out. Peace.